Hey guys, my name is Ayaz Notamata and you may recognize me from my award-winning performance as HR Puff and Stuff. And I want to make one thing pain stinkingly clear here. I am a pretty dang big fan of Borderlands, okay? I played the first one when it came out, playing split-screen co-op with my friends. Then I played the second game on release, and to this day, Towsit is one of my favorite games of all time. Then I played the pre-sequel on release, and uh, well, look, I played them all on release, okay? Including each part of Tales from the Borderlands, okay? I played them all, alright? I'm a big fan! <laughs> to reiterate an earlier video, I've made an entire playthrough of the first game of this channel, an ongoing playthrough on my collab channel of the second game, this random video, this comic, I even have a few figurines, I've read all these comics, and I recently even got this here mask, alright? Have I friggin convinced you yet? Was it even in question, actually? I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, regardless. You can only imagine my hype when Borderlands 3 was first teased. Actually, you don't have to imagine it at all. Here's a bunch of tweets of me going on about it. My hype at the time was only rivaled by my excitement for Portal 2, which came out in 2011, okay? Not many games excite me, but Borderlands 3? is something I have been absolutely dying for. Already I was jumping into lengthy discussions with my friends about what we hoped would be in Borderlands 3 before the game was officially announced. It was an exciting time. And before we knew it, it was March 28th. The Borderlands 3 Mask of Mayhem trailer was dropped and everyone was all <laughs> And I, well, <laughs> how do I put this, uh... Like, do I even need to describe this? People were excited, okay? There was so much to look at and unpack. Little details to mill over on just a 1 minute 36 second long black and white trailer were enough to keep people soiling their pants for months to come. I was so excited. I was unchained. I was a beast. There was nothing that could stop me. The official release date for Borderlands 3 and a new trailer to accompany it is released. But something is a little amiss. Something is wrong. I got bad juju all over. I just can't shake oh. this feeling that... Oh. Oh no. Indeed. It seems that the PC version of Borderlands 3 would in fact be releasing exclusively on the Epic Game Store. Rather than Steam. At least until April 2020, that is. And surprisingly, people took this information really well. The dislikes are out of control in the video, and the forums and Twitter caught fire! I, of course, was very calm and kept a level head about it. Here, look, here's me being calm and keeping a level head about it. But why was this such a big deal anyway? Well, a few reasons, to my understanding. It's not just that the Epic Games Store is primarily associated with Fortnite, Although I'm sure that was a deal breaker for some. No, the Epic Games Store was just straight up failing to impress the people in recent times. Aside from straight up lacking many of the features Steam does and rumors of them selling your data to China, the exclusive games war had already been going on for a bit. See Outer Worlds and Metro. But this really broke the camel's back on that. This was the main reason I found it so devastating as well. It wasn't that it was on the Epic Games Store, it's the fact that it was exclusive to the Epic Games Store. You see, every single Borderlands game up until this point has been available on Steam. And as a result, I think it's not unreasonable to assume that the majority of the fans of Borderlands are likely Steam users and have their whole collection of games, much like myself, on Steam. To suddenly release the highly anticipated sequel to one of my favorite franchises of all time on a rival game store, when literally every other entry was on Steam, felt like such a stab in the back. Why would they do this? Well, money, obviously, but it still hurts. This caused such a disturbance that it swore a lot of people both off Borderlands 3 and the series itself. Some people opted to wait until its presumed Steam release, and then you have people like me, who literally got every single game on release. And now, well, there's so much controversy around it. But, unfortunately, it didn't end there. In fact, it seems to only kickstart the domino effect of controversy that was... Borderlands 3.
As the rage started to fill the past Borderlands fans, people were going to extreme measures to vent their frustrations, from starting useless petitions to review bombing the past Borderlands games on Steam, as if that would do anything other than put people off from playing the original games. It was then that the rumours about the game started to come out. I started hearing rumours that supposedly the work environment was less than ideal with harsh deadlines, less of a focus on creative integrity and more of a focus on multiplayer and that the game just straight up was quoted to be not very good from a supposed Gearbox employee. Again, these are just rumours, some of which have actually been said to be defunct. However, the negative effects still lingered on, of all of which these rumours stemmed from one particular person, Randy Pitchford. As Randy Pitchford, who is the head of Gearbox Software, has been specifically under a lot of fire of an ever ongoing list of controversies. <gasps> Supposedly lying about microtransactions, venting on Twitter, painting himself as the victim, complaining about journalism, unwilling to pay the voice actor of Claptrap David Eddings, supposedly rage firing Eddings, talking down to Eddings in a Twitter response, physically abusing Eddings, verbally abusing Eddings and other employees, supposedly lying about the voice actor of Reese's involvement in the game, acting overall childish, of which there are many examples of such as sticking his wet finger in a voice actor's ear while they are trying to record, wedding animal abuse, supposedly siphoning $12 million all for himself. Yeah. Just watch Jim Sterling's video, okay? He can- he covers this way better than I do. Additionally, while I was even just making this video, yet another controversy popped up where people are now trying to boycott Borderlands 3 because something like 2K went to a YouTuber's house and threatened him or something. I, it just, it's just never ending. And all of this just left me feeling really sad, actually. I found the negativity to be so overwhelming with so many rumors and bad things being spread around it that it was impossible to avoid. So I just stopped. I stopped looking into it. I stopped reading articles. I stopped watching trailers. I just stopped thinking about it. I stopped thinking about the one game I was excited to come out. The one game I was looking forward to. I couldn't stand to even think about it. How depressing. Then one day, out of nowhere, Gearbox dropped a sudden DLC for Borderlands 2, Commander Lilith The Fight for Sanctuary. Just a brand new DLC for Borderlands 2, just to bridge the gap between the two games. Aaron ended up telling me about it and convinced me to play it. I mean, it was Borderlands 2, one of my favorite games of all time with new content. Why not, right? Well, I realized something while playing it, and that was that it was fun. It was really fun. Playing Borderlands is fun, and I love playing it. It was this simple thing that sparked something in my head. An idea I hadn't considered until now. One that may backfire, but I'm willing to give it a chance. The idea of separating the art from the artist. The simple notion of enjoying and judging the work on its own merit without considering the association of the person behind the work. It's an odd topic, and one that may produce different results from example to example. Uh, Mother's Basement actually made a video talking about it a while ago, as it's something that requires a lot of attention these days, and people's opinions differ drastically with each example. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk about Kevin Spacey and his acting performance, or H.P. Lovecraft's books despite the name of his cat. No, I just want to play Borderlands 3, and just judge it for how it is, by itself. No epic store nonsense, no Randy Pitchford controversies, no rage and juice review bombing. No. Just Borderlands 3. And this is where the video is being split into two parts. The first part is detailing my acceptance of Borderlands 3 and how I learned to stop worrying about the game and just wait for it to come out so I can play it and see for myself. The second part of this video will come out in a few months after the game has come out and I've played through the game for myself so we can see if I was right or wrong in ignoring the controversy surrounding the game. Honestly, I hope the game is good. I hope it's great in fact. I want to play a new Borderlands game and by gum, I'm excited to do so! I pre-ordered the game on the PS4 a few weeks ago before I started making this video. I believe we will be doing a playthrough of it on Same Industries when it comes out, so if you want to see my first impressions of the game, you can check it out there. Also, Aaron might be there as well. I don't know. So yeah, hope this video tickled you in your safe for work areas, and please let me know what you think of the situation. Are you going to join me in separating art from the artist, or are you now sworn off Borderlands forever? 
or are you neutral and just straight up don't care? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I have been Eyes Not Amato. Please tell your mother I still love her. I am sincerely sorry for what happened back then. I really do mean it. And I will see you next time. Bye.